In this video, we're going to continue our work with vectors and look at the scalar product. The scalar product is often called the dot product and can be written as a dot b is equal to the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b multiplied by the cosine of theta. This is one way that we can multiply vectors. So let's have a look now on how we can use this. If we take two direction vectors, the dot product will allow us to find the angle between these. So if I say now that this is a direction vector, and we looked at direction vectors in the last video, let's say this is A, let's say this is another direction vector, B, and this now is the angle between them, theta, the dot product, or now the scalar product, will allow us to find the angle theta. In this particular module, we're going to look at three different scenarios. To begin with, an understanding of the cosine curve can help. So what I'm going to do is a quick sketch. Okay, we're going to draw now cos theta. So if we can consider cos theta, at zero, the value of cos theta is equal to one. We come down and round, now down to 180 degrees, where we're at zero, then back up. So what we can see here now is we've got this point zero comma one. We've got this point here, and that is going to be in degrees 90, 0. And we have this point here, which is going to be 180, minus 1. So this is the graph of y is equal to cos theta. So let's go ahead and look at the three scenarios that we have. The first scenario now is that we have two parallel vectors. So let's just consider now a and b. And a and b are just two parallel vectors. As we can see, the angle between these two vectors is going to be zero. So this would be A, and then this next one would be B. These are parallel. If you like, you could say that B was two lots of A. So let's now look at applying the dot product to these two vectors. So if we had now A dotted with B, and this is the multiplication here, we can see that this is going to be the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of b, multiplied by the cos of 0. Now, cos of 0 is 1. So we can see, in this case, a dot b is going to be the modulus of a, multiplied by the modulus of b. And that now is a standard result. If you took unit vectors, if we now dotted i with i, we would end up now with 1, as these both have now length 1, and that's 1 times 1. So let's just pick a couple of uh, parallel vectors. Let's just say now we had 1, 1, 1. Let's say that that's A. So let A be equal to 1, 1, 1. Let B be equal to, I said it was doubled up, so let's now have 2, 2, 2. So we're working in three-dimensional space here. So what we've got then is the following, A dot B. So we've got 1, 1, 1, and we're going to dot that now with the 2, 2, 2. If I do that, what I'm going to have then is 2 plus 2 plus 2. So all I'm doing now is simply multiplying the i components, the j components, and the k components. So therefore, we can see from here that a dot b is equal to 6. Now, let's look at the other side of this equation now. If I take the modulus of A and multiply it by the modulus of B, remember now we can say from here that the modulus of A is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared. Therefore, from here that we can see from this that the modulus of A is going to be equal to root 3. If we take now the modulus of B, we're going to have the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared, so that's going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4, so now we can see the modulus of b is going to be root 12. Root 3 times by root 12 will give us root 36, the root of 36 is 6. So if we have now parallel vectors, when we find the dot product, it will simply be now the two moduli multiplied. That's a less common scenario for the particular module that we're going to do. One more frequently occurring problem is that of perpendicular vectors. So let's now look at two vectors. Let's just grab these up. What we can have, let's just say that these are perpendicular vectors. So perpendicular means that we've got a right angle between them. 
So let's say that this one now is going to be A, so let's put that there, and this one is going to be B. Okay, so let's consider now A dot B is equal to the modulus of A multiplied now by the modulus of B cosine theta. Now consider the angle between these two. The angle between these two is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 is equal to naught. So we can say for perpendicular vectors, we can say now that A dot B will be equal to zero as the cosine of 90 degrees, which is the angle between them, is zero. If we have now the uh, dot product being equal to zero, that can tell us that they are perpendicular or that the moduli of one of these is zero. But in general, now for perpendicular vectors, if two direction vectors are perpendicular, the dot product will be equal to zero. So let's see that in action. Let's just take, uh, let's go for A. Let's say A, and these are direction vectors. So let's just say now that A is going to be, and we'll put this just here, let's go for A. Uh, we'll go for 2, let's go for 2, 1, and minus 3. So B, let's just say that this is now the direction vector of these two. Let's just say, let's make that uh, 1, let's go for 1, 1, 1. Now, if I do a dot b here, what we're going to have now is the following. We're going to have 2, 1, minus 3, and we're going to multiply this now by 1, 1, 1. So I'm going to end up now with a dot product of 2 plus 1 minus 3, and that's going to be equal to 0. Therefore, these are perpendicular vectors. So if your dot product is 0, you can see now that in general, these are perpendicular or the moduli of one of these is going to be zero. But in this course, it's generally, uh, you'll generally be working with perpendicular vectors. So a typical uh, straightforward question might be given that two perpendicular vectors are, uh, or two vectors are perpendicular, find the value of a. So we might have, for example, 6a and then let's say minus 1. And we might be given now, we'll say that this is, so let's just say that this now is the vector P, okay? Let's just say this is the vector P, and we'd have the vector Q, and we'd be told that this, for example, was going to be, let's go for 2, minus 3, and minus 3. We are told that these are perpendicular, and we need to find the value of A. So what we'd do then is 6 times 2, which would give me 12, A times minus 3, which is minus 3A, and then minus 3, and that would be equal to 0. So what's that give me? 9 is equal to 3a, and the value of a would be equal to 3. So that's a scenario where we do that. So we can see now, looking at the cosine curve, if we have an angle of 90 degrees between the two vectors, the dot product is going to be 0. And that is essentially per a perpendicular, uh, an example of having now two perpendicular direction vectors. Okay, the third scenario. Let's draw up the third scenario, which is most common. Let's say we've got now two direction vectors, and again, we'll call these A and B. So what we wanted to do now is just do these, and let's just put these on. This now is our third scenario. So most common of the three scenarios, this is going to be A, this is going to be B, and this is going to be now theta, the angle between them. So let's look at this. We can say now A dotted with B is equal to the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B multiplied by the cosine of theta. So doing some rearranging, we can see now the dot product is going to be rearranged, so we can have now a dot b over now the modulus of a multiplied by the modulus of b will give us the angle between these two vectors. So let's look at an example. Let's just choose a couple of lines. Let's say now uh, we've got two, um, let's, in fact, let's just choose two direction vectors. Let's go for one uh, let's say 1, 4, 3, and then let's say that this is A. So let's just say that A is 1, 4, 3, and let's say that B is going to be, let's go for uh, 3, uh, let's do, in fact, we'll do 2 minus 1, 1. So what we can see then is the following. A dotted with B. So let's go ahead and do this then. So what we're going to have then is A dotted with B divided by now the modulus of A, multiplied by the modulus of b will be equal to the cosine of the angle between them. So the way I like to do this is simply now put these up and what we'll have is the following. We'll have 1, 4 and then we'll have 3. We will have 2 minus 1 and then 1 
divided now by the modulus of each of these. So that's going to be 1 squared, that's going to be 4 squared, and that's going to be 3 squared multiplied now. Remember, the modulus is the length of this line segment. If you aren't familiar with that, go back to the last video and check that out. So that's 2 squared, then we'll have plus minus 1 squared, plus 1 squared. Okay, so what are we going to have in the numerator here? We're going to have 2 minus 4, and then we're going to have now plus 3. So 2 minus 4 plus 3. All over now, the root, that's going to give me 1, that's going to give me 16, so we've got 17 and then 9. So root 26 multiplied now by the root, that's 4 and that's 6 multiplied by uh, the root of 6. So what's that going to give me? That's going to give me now 1 over 1, root 1, 5, 6. So let's just total that up and that will now give me the angle. So what we can see then is this is cosine theta. So let's go ahead on a calculator and take the inverse. So all we'd need to do, check your integrals mode, shift cos now, 1 over root 1, 5, 6. Uh, and that will give us the angle. Okay, so we can see now that the acute angle between them is 85.4 degrees. So theta would be equal to 85.4 degrees. Now, if this value right here, the dot product, let's go to this one right here. If the dot product is positive, we have an acute angle. If the dot product is negative, we have an obtuse angle. But if we consider two vectors, often you'll be asked to find now, and we'll just put these up. So what we've got then, if we have an acute angle, let's have a look at this one right here. Let's say this is the acute angle between the two vectors. Then let's call this now the theta. Then we have now the other side, this one right here. And that's going to be 180 minus theta. So in this case, what you're going to have is a negative dot product. Here, you're going to have a positive dot product. So, for example, if you took now two lines that um, were intersecting and you ended up with a negative, all you're going to do essentially now is subtract that from the, the 180 to find the acute angle. So let's look at a, a kind of typical question you might be asked on that. You might be given two lines. Let's say uh, line one. Let's say L1, R1 can be given as follows. Let's just give it now one, then we've got two, six. Let's go for one, two, six, plus some multiple. And I'm going to use lambda. Let's just use lambda. So lambda, and then we can have minus one, two, so minus one, two, minus three. Okay, let's say we've got line L2. We can give now R2 as we'll go for 3. Let's say 3 minus 4, and then we'll go for 7, plus some multiple. Let's call that mu. So I'm using lambda and mu, as I did in the last video, as my scalar parameters. 4, let's go minus 1 and minus 1. Now, what we want to do is find the angle between these two. Now, they don't have to necessarily intersect all we want to do is find a convenient spot where we can find the angle between these two direction vectors. It's the direction vectors that we're interested in. Remember, these are position vectors, these are the direction vectors. So let's now say that these are just going to be A and B. So what we can say then is A dot B will be equal now to the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B multiplied by the cosine of the angle. So just rearranging, now I'd like to think that we can go straight ahead and write this as follows. So we can say we've got minus 1, 2, minus 3, and then we dot that now with 4, one, uh, minus 1, minus 1, and we put this now over the modulus of minus 1, and I'll just write these out, minus 1 squared is 1, plus now 4, plus 9, multiplied by... And we've got here 16 plus 1 plus 1. So 16 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so let's have a look. And that's going to be equal to cos theta. I'm just running out of space a bit here. So let's just, let's just slim this down a little. So therefore, what we can see from this is cos theta is going to be equal to, and you need to write this out in full, it's going to be minus 4. So we're going to have minus 4. We're going to have minus 2 plus 3. Okay, so minus 4, minus 2, plus 3, all over now. That's going to give me root of 14 multiplied now by the root of 18. So we can see from here that cos theta will be equal to, what's that going to give me? Minus 2, minus 3. So we're going to get minus 3 
over now the root of, and we don't need to simplify this, 14 times by 18. So what's that going to give me? 200 and, uh, 252 is it? Let's just put that in. Uh, either way, we'll just put this for a calculator. So what we can see here now, this is negative, so I'm going to get an obtuse angle. The question in an exam would generally ask you for now the acute angle. So because this is negative, it's going to give me now an obtuse angle. The way that you might want to look about at this now is the following. If we go back to the cosine curve, we can see now that this is where we've got our obtuse angles. Our obtuse angles go now from 90 to 180, and we can see these values here are all negative. So we can see the acute angles are positive, now the uh, um, obtuse angles are negative. So let's go ahead and state this. So if we wanted to find the acute angle between these, we would just now take the inverse cosine, so shift cos in degrees, we'd have now negative 3 over uh, root, uh, root of 14, and you can write it straight like so. You can just write the root of 14 multiplied by the root of 18 or any other way in which uh, you, you'd want to. So what we can see then is the, this is going to give me now that theta is going to be 100. So it's saying theta is equal to 100.8 dot dot dot. Now that is an acute angle. Therefore, uh, sorry, an obtuse angle. Therefore, the acute angle is just going to be 180 minus the answer. And that will give me now 79.1. So 79.1 is the acute angle between them. If you like to think about this now, all it's essentially saying is if you've got two vectors now, if we've got an acute angle, we must also have an obtuse angle. So if we can measure now an acute angle, then that's theta. We must also be able to measure now the uh, obtuse angle, which is the 180 minus theta. So there we go. That's essentially the dot product. The dot product is one of the two main ways that we would multiply these vectors. We've looked at three different scenarios. Parallel vectors, which are less likely to come up, but A dotted with B is simply going to be now the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B, and we've seen that with an example. We have perpendicular vectors. The dot product of perpendicular vectors is zero. If the dot product is zero, it doesn't necessarily mean that they, these are two perpendicular vectors. It might be that um, a is a zero vector or B is a zero vector. But in general, in this particular module, you will use this fact that A dot B equals zero. We've got perpendicular vectors. Then the third application is to find the angle between two direction vectors. We're not interested here in the position vectors of these two lines. We just consider the direction vectors. We dot them, now rearrange, get cosine of theta on the right or left hand side, take it and then find generally the acute angle. So hopefully now that's given you enough information to move on with your work and start answering some questions involving vectors.